and you stay in touch with God all the time. You, you have a God connection. You have a very good God connection. I, I, it's just amazing because um, this connection now that I, had, that I have with God, I didn't have, to be quite honest with you, uh, I did not have that while I was going to church. So it's, you are actually, you are curing your cancer. It is you doing that. And you're doing it with God. Like, when you feel that eraser come in and erase that thing, you know, that you found, and you, you know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's like an eraser comes in and erases it. Doesn't, have you noticed that? It again. Have you noticed that? Yes, I have, yes. Well, that's God doing that. Right. Can, can, I, can I be honest with you with something? Oh, no, you, we wouldn't want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, if it's not appropriate to say, then you can, when you edit, then you can take this out. But you, you can know. say anything you want, Angela. It's okay, really. Okay. Um, okay. I don't know if you can identify with me. Now, um, I, when I was small, I've been brought up in church or churches, like going to church with my mother and everything, and believing in God. And, um, you know, even though my mom's obviously is, um, gone back to her country and I'm here um, in London, you know, I still attend church and everything. Um, the ironic thing I would say, you know, um, we, in church we talk about things like healing, and, you know, God will heal you. And um, for, for many years I, I could never connect if you know what I mean. But it's like, since I've come into the immunities, it's like um, I've connected and it's like I understand it better. But I was thinking, but, you know, going to church for so long, like from when I was small, you know, I would have thought the leaders would, I'm not trying to bash them or anything, I would have thought the leaders would have things like this, like healing, under wraps because there, there are, I've witnessed a, um, a few people in church who had had cancer and had died and I'm thinking well why didn't God save them then because you know you're Christians and we go to church you know, you know what the, the, the problem uh, Angela the, the yeah. problem with church is that most people don't actually connect with God in church and even the ones that do, you know, like there are, you know, there are people who simply ask God to heal them and it happened. You know, those people exist, okay? They're real. They are the tiny minority. Most people go to revivals and do not get healed or connect with God. They're just doing what they think they're supposed to do and it doesn't work. Other people, oh, for example, <clears throat> uh, there's a cancer surgeon named Bernie Siegel who told a story. And the story was about a guy who came in for a checkup and they told him, you have terminal cancer and you can't leave the hospital. You have to stay here, we'll get you a bed, we have to immediately start treatment or you're going to die. You're going to be in the hospital a couple of weeks then you're going to go home, but you won't be able to do very much. And this guy said, well, I can't do that because it's time to plant my garden now. It's the spring, and I have to go home and plant my garden. Okay. That's the story. The guy, so the guy walked out of the hospital. He never got treated. Seven years later, he was still planting his garden every spring. No cancer. Wow. <laughs> he didn't go to church. He didn't pray. He went home planted his garden, and the cancer disappeared. 
Now, the guy who told the story is not me. It's a cancer surgeon named Bernie Siegel, a doctor, in a book that I read. I got an audio book by Bernie Siegel. He has a lot of stories like that. There's a lot of stories like that in his books. <clears throat> so, the point is, <clears throat> he was doing what you're doing. Except the form his thing took was planting the garden. Oh, right. Yes, I get it now. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I know that you've only been doing this a few weeks, so you're going you're gonna to remember this story in a few months, and it will make even more sense to you. And you will realize that that guy was doing what you were doing. But you're doing it consciously and intentionally. And you're identifying minutia. See, another thing, there are a lot of people who, who are in church and they are connected to God. It works for them. Church works for them. They go to church. You can see it. You go. I know of some Christians that live up the street from me. They are connected to God through their Christianity. At least the parents are. The daughter is a religious fanatic who cannot connect to God. But she is still, a, she sees herself as a fervent Christian. She's a fanatical Christian. But she has no God connection. You with me? Do you understand? Yeah, yeah. But the, I do. But her parents, they have a God connection. They're, they're like, they're really inside of it. And they do, they have healing and cure and they attract the wonderful things and, you know, the law of attraction is working for them. It's all happening for them. It's just great, you know, what they're doing. But they don't know how they're doing it exactly. Like, you see, you know how you're doing it. Yeah. The difference, yeah. And you, you know, if, it's, if something goes wrong, you know how to figure it out and f make it go right. Yeah. See? And you stay in touch with God all the time. You, you have a God connection. You have a very good God connection. I, I, it's just amazing because um, this connection now that I had, that I have with God, I didn't have, to be quite honest with you, uh, I did not have that while I was going to church. Yes, I know. For you, you had to really do this to connect with God. This is what a lot of people have to do. They will never connect with God unless they do this, what you are doing. They can't do it for, they can't do it with church. That's most people, by the way. Sorry? That's most people. Okay. Well, you know, I uh, started following an Indian guru when I was 15, which I still am. His name is Meher Baba. Yes, I heard it on BMP3, yes. <laughs> right, and, and, you know, there's a Meher Baba Center here in, you know, South Carolina, in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. And... When I go there, what I notice is it's like the, the people who go, go there are like in the Christian church. Most of them cannot connect. They want to, they wish they could, they really want to, but they need to do this. They can connect if they do this, but they just can't connect that way. You know, they can't relate to it. It's just like trying to relate to Christ or... Moses or uh, Muhammad or whoever, they can't do it. They cannot do it. It's just more like a superstition with them. Which superstition is another immune dysfunction. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, I, I, I've just got one more question to ask you. Um, as I was going through um, the lesson, I, I tend to deviate and go under everything that is um, underlined, you know, double click and just read up on what it's saying. Um, another interesting thing that I came across was um, something called a spiritual guide. Yes, yeah, spirit guide. Area code 813 
Ta-da, ta-da, ta-da.